Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about ruminants and uh, brassicas. So, what are brassicas? First of all, it's uh, any plant in the genus Brassica. Pretty simple to understand, um, which is actually in the mustard family. So, like turnips, um, forage rape seed, and cabbage. Um, so, the reason why I'm talking about this is it's commonly used as a forage crop to extend the season. Um, so, a lot of times you can only forage in the summer and the spring. Um, this helps you be able to actually do forage in the fall and the winter. Um, we've used uh, turnip and rapeseed common, rapeseed mix before, and that's why I know of these problems because we had problems. Okay, so you're telling us real life problems that you had. Yeah, it was uh, great. Pretty bad. Okay, I mean um, great that you're informing us. <laughs> not great that you had problems. Yeah. So if you're not, if you don't understand what the problems are that can occur, um, it can cause severe problems, especially in cattle are the main breeds of the issues, uh, but sheep and goats too, and sheep and goats aren't really. Uh, Commonly talked about, it, which is why we had problems, is because we did research and we couldn't find the problems at first okay. until after it happened. Um, so there's a long list of diseases that this can cause. Um, the first four are almost in cattle. Um, so poli in polio and syphilitia. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a brain disorder. Um, it's it's characterized by blindness, aimless watering, uh, twitching, and circling. Um, it'll typically happen in cattle after about a week of grazing. Um, and it's thought to be caused by the excessive sulfur in the plants. Um, and you can treat that with thiamine, thiamine, but that doesn't always actually work because there's also other problems that are occurring in there that we don't actually fully understand how it's all working. So you can treat it, but it may not actually work. Um, and That's quite a list of yeah. problems. <laughs> That's scary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next one is hemolytic anemia, um, which is a blood disorder, which is also worse in cattle. Um, it's characterized by dark brown or red urine, um, also pale or yellow mucus linings, and an unthrifty appearance. Um, and that can just, that is mostly caused by if they have too high a percentage of the brassicas in their diet. So if it's just 100% brassicas, then they're very likely to get this. Um, and the cattle may just collapse and die suddenly. Um, it'll occur within like the first week and typically is the word that we have <coughs> kale in there instead of just like rapeseed or turnips. Um, and then you have nitrates. So brassicas are really good at actually absorbing nitrogen from the soil. And once that gets into the rumen, they get converted into nitrates, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream and will combine with hemoglobin to form methemoglobin, which can't actually transport oxygen. So that's where the problems are occurring here. Um, that can cause death within a few hours, but it may be up to a couple of days before you see problems from it. And that's also worse than cattle. <coughs> and then you have the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is also occurring in cattle, but that's if you have a sudden access. So if you just let them go and graze one day, they will most likely have this problem if you don't um, slowly introduce them to it. Uh, so it's especially occurring whenever you follow a <coughs> dry, high roughage diet. Um, and it's characterized by rapid difficult breathing and will typically cause death within two days. So the next ones are all not as likely to occur, but can are more likely to occur in like sheep and goats. Um, so hypomagnesia is also known as grass tetany. So most of you should know what that is, it's just a magnesium, um, a lack of magnesium. Um, that's what they cause to do to high calcium and potassium. Um, and then hypothyroidism and goiter is the ones that I have had uh, experience with, which happens very commonly in goats and sheep. Um, it's basically caused by a thing called glucosinolates, right, um, which is in turnips, and that prevents the uptake of iodine. Uh, so that causes these. Um, it also occurs very frequently in pregnancies and goats. Um, um, then you have blindness, which is called rape blindness, which occurs mostly in sheep, and that's just glucosinolate poisoning, so it's caused by the same thing that causes the iodine problems. Um, and then photosensitivity occurs if you let them graze before the forage is actually mature. Um, so that will cause like scalding on the ears and the head, especially if they're white, and so just more sensitive to the sun, most likely have burns, they'll also have like swelling in their ears. Um, and that's also more common in sheep and goats. Cotton toxicity is obviously sheep. <coughs> I don't know about that. Um, choking hazard is just for cattle, and that's, that's with turnips. It's pretty rare to happen, but it obviously it can happen. 
Um, so the tainted milk and meat is due to, I believe it's called PTC. So if you've ever done genetic testing, we've talked about it in like AP Bio class, we talked about it, um, where certain humans are tasters for PTC and it's a dominant trait and basically it's just a really sour taste. So if they graze on grass <coughs> plants and then you drink the milk or eat the meat immediately, it'll have a really sour taste. On some people. Some, some people, people. Okay, yeah. Okay. So that's just specific things. Mm -hmm. um, so what we had is the pregnancy problems. Um, so you have sheep. Where we have goats. Oh, goats, sorry. Yeah, goats. so okay. it's actually more common in goats, okay. but it's really hard to find any information about it except for every, pretty much every article have one sentence that says, mm -hmm. by the way, this right. causes problems with pregnant goats. Now are these your goats? No, okay. I just found something. Okay, okay, this okay. was in when I was a sophomore in yeah, okay, school, okay. so it's really mm -hmm. long time ago. But yeah. we lost half our herd because of this. Yeah. Okay. And almost all the does that year. So basically, as I said earlier, the goat decided to block iodine uptake, and because the iodine needs of the does, so like the moms are more, uh, they're higher at that point, that causes problems for the babies because the babies don't get enough iodine. Um, so this causes the. Uh, iodine deficiency of abort abortion here. So basically the moms abort their babies early and because ours were all so close together, um, I believe all of the does who aborted did it within three days of each other. And that's like 20 does all aborted mm. within three days and some mm. of the moms died too. And wow. all of, most of ours looked like this where they didn't actually have hair either. So they have the same problem with not having the full hair coat. But some of them did look like this. <coughs> and you can tell by here the goiter so the goiter is where the thyroid gland is swelling because you're not having enough iodine there. Um, and we only had problems with our goats that had African breeds. So we do son and boar cross. Um, the sons are good moms, the boars raise good meat, and we sell the goats for meat. So none of our full bloods had problems, and if they were 75% son, they didn't have problems, but 50% and higher boar had issues. Um, so there's some sources that say there's African like genes problems, but a lot of them don't say anything because it's hard to find any information on it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the problems that we had with it was mostly goiter. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do because obviously it is a really good forage to use otherwise people wouldn't use it. So there's things you can do to prevent the problems. Um, one of the first ones is to wait until the forage is fully mature before allowing the animals to consume. That's a pretty easy task in and of itself. Um, and then you don't want the brassicas to compose more than two-thirds of the animal's diet. So you'll also feed hay or corn or something else like that on the side so that they don't consume too much of that and get all the nutrients they need. Because in toxicology, you remember, dilution is the solution. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Um, and then I was talking about the taming. So if you're going to use the animals for meat or milk soon, you'll withhold them from the pasture. And that depends on the species as to how long you actually need to withhold them from that sort of pasture due to the size of the animal. Um, you also want to slowly introduce them to it, so you're not going to just let them go out and eat. You're going to let them eat for two or three hours per day for about a week in the beginning, because that will prevent them from having too much immediately, and that prevents most of the problems that cattle had. Um, and then also, especially at the beginning, you'll want to make sure you heat, feed them some hay or some straw before they actually go out and eat. That way they don't gorge themselves on it. So it's another method to prevent them from eating too much immediately and having all those toxicology problems. Um, and then also, especially for goats, you'll want to supplement with a high quality trace mineral mix and iodized salt. And the iodized salt would fix a lot of the problems that we had, but we had salt, but they weren't getting enough. So that was our problem. And I'm wondering how much salt for livestock is iodized. I'm not sure, I guess. All the stuff that we get says it is. is okay. okay. Yeah. So it's going to be routine. And then in general, just the solution that we found for the pregnant does is just not letting them graze at all. Uh, I haven't heard of this problem in sheep, so I think it's mostly in does with the uh, iodine proportions. But That's an interesting topic. And you learned the hard way. Yeah, we lost okay. half our herd. Half time. your herd, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, and, and they were all dying and aborting within a three-day period, you said, right? So, like, what a catastrophe. I mean, it's like, what's happening? Uh, was a vet helpful? I mean, did you... Did you try a vet come out, or is this? I mean, by the time we realized it was just too what was late. going out, because the first one happens, and you think, oh, well, she just had a problem. Right. And then all of it <coughs> happened. And my family doesn't have a lot of time to be going there, because we all right. did sports. My mom's okay, you're, sports. Yeah, we're always so at school. So things were happening, and it was hard to get a handle on. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty much all. OK, you ready for quite? So, I love those sources there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. That's very interesting. Questions, comments? 
This happens every once in a while, not maybe with the uh, turnips and stuff, but my wife, they lost a bunch of heifers uh, in Wisconsin one time when they turned out some dairy heifers uh, to a pasture that they hardly ever used, but there were some oak trees on the other side of the land, and the acorns were dropping in the pasture, their pasture, and the heifers started eating them. They had dead heifers all over the place before they realized what happened, you know. Yeah. What something happens to you, of course, now you've learned, but you know, if somebody would, if they would, if somebody would have said, "Hey, watch out! Those heifers love those acorns, although they're poisonous for the heifer." You, they could avoid something. But the school of 